Hello everyone, it's Molly here again and it is like pouring rain outside all day. It's been freezing cold. My family and I have literally been like in sweaters and sweatpants and slippers and drinking hot tea and watching movies and laying in bed all day. I'm pre-recording this by the way. It's Saturday when I'm recording this. Um, and I've actually been like, I, I have an eye infection so I've been like really tired and it's really sore so it's just kind of been a really nice lazy day and yesterday was my cousin's wedding so we were out really late last night or I guess early into this morning so it's just kind of been one of those days which is why I look like this and I'm just casual so that's that um, and as you can see from the title I am doing a video on guide dog retirement so what that looks like, um, how you know the dog is ready, what the dog does afterwards, all that kind of stuff. And I mentioned in my last video, my What's In My Bag Summer Edition, that I wanted to do more guide dog videos because I'm obsessed with guide dogs. Not necessarily dogs, but guide dogs and service dogs. And I like educating you guys on topics that you might not know that much about or on topics that you might have always been curious about but didn't have anyone to ask or didn't know if it was appropriate to ask because obviously if you watch my channel you know everything's appropriate to ask me and I'm open and honest about absolutely everything. So please, 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 like I said in that video, comment down below or tweet me requests you have for other service dog guide dog related videos. Um, and yeah, so I don't know if what I'm saying is applicable to all service dogs across the board because I'm blind and I use a guide dog, not any other form of a service dog. So I'm, for that reason, speaking for the guide dog community, not the service dog community in general because I honestly just don't have much experience, don't know much about that. So I'm purely just speaking as somebody who's trained with my first dog, for, worked her for seven years, and then am now on my second dog, and kind of the experience I have had, the experience I know my friends have had who have service or, or have guide dogs, and kind of what I've been told from my trainers. So I obviously am not a guide dog trainer myself, I'm just a guide dog user and have a lot of friends who are guide dog users. So all of that aside, oh and also I'll link my doggy vloggy playlist down below in case you want to see any of my other guide dog related videos. So like I mentioned, I got my first guide dog when I was 13 years old from the Mira Foundation in Quebec, Canada. And I worked Gypsy, picture here, for seven years and uh, she went all through um, grade 8 and then high school with me, prom living on my own for two years and worked through um, when I was speaking on the We Day tour so she did like insane schedules like every day she went to school with me and that kind of lifestyle is uh, more typical for guide dogs like going to work with their owner or going to school so that's a pretty standard lifestyle so she got kind of accustomed to living that normal average guide dog lifestyle and so when I went into working with Me To We, my family and I, we knew that that might shorten Gypsy's working lifespan. And I'm sorry if, sorry, side note, oh, it's already happening. I'm sorry if this video is super rambly. I didn't really want to like structure it or plan it. It's just purely gonna be me like sitting down and blabbing to the camera, kind of like my um, Living With RP video, which I'll also link below in case you're interested in, in my eye disease and blindness and that kind of thing. But so I'm sorry if this is a little bit um, rambly or discombobulated. I will try my best. So when I went to meet a wee, my family and I kind of talked about how living that crazy lifestyle and having that insane schedule and constantly being on airplanes and changing um, time zones and getting up at 5 a.m. for events and then not going to sleep until midnight, like that could really wear on her. And, and especially as she was already getting older, she had already been working with me for five years. When I started working for Me To We, so I knew that going into it, um, but it, it's still not reality until it's time to retire your dog. So at the end of my first year working for Me To We, Gypsy would have been even eight and a half years old, and I started thinking, okay, she's worked for six years, she's eight and a half years old. Um, 
I need to start thinking about it. Definitely not like, oh, I need to retire her now. It was just kind of a, like, now I'm going to start looking for the warning signs. And I contacted the Mira Foundation and I let them know and they were like, yeah, absolutely. We can come out whenever you want to check in on you guys, see how she's doing, give us, uh, give you our opinion and that kind of thing, which I really appreciated. And I, we just kind of put that on the back burner for the time and we all were just kind of more aware of the topic and the idea of retirement. And then uh, I kept her working for the next, so that was around um, beginning of summer of 2013 and then I kept her working through that summer through uh, fall of 2013 into the winter and then springtime is when I called Mira again so like a little less than a year later I called them and I was like all right you know I, I think you should come out and and let's talk about this more seriously now and so they came out in April and right kind of mid-April and we went on a couple of walks around my neighborhood they observed us walking together and working and then we sat down in my kitchen and we had a big conversation and they basically said she's definitely good to work for another six months possibly even stretch it to another year and I was so thrilled about that because I was so nervous that they were gonna tell me like yeah you're right like we need to retire her but they were they were saying you know she's she's nine and a half She's getting older, she's a big dog. Uh, not like, not huge, not as big as Gallup, but like she was 65 pounds, so she was a decent sized dog. And so we were just kind of saying six, six more months to a year, which would bring her to um, eight years of work and around 10 to 10 and a half years old, which is a very good time to retire. And to give you a bit more context, the standard age of retirement for a guide dog is between six to eight years of work. So you typically, depending on the school, can get the dog as young as um, 13, 14 months old to as old as three years old. So when I got Gypsy, she was two and a half. And when I got Gallup, he had turned two in May and I got him in August. So he was a little over two. And the Mira Foundation, when you get guide dogs from there, they typically are quite a bit older than other guide dog schools who are getting puppies at like 13, 14 months old because the Mira Foundation does in-harness training at their facility for longer than other schools do. So that's why you're getting a bit of an older dog, which honestly I personally prefer, even though it might mean possibly like a slightly shorter working life. I prefer it because it means my dog is a little bit more mature, a little bit older, and has a little bit more experience under its harness, I guess. Not belt, you see what I did there? Uh, blind girl jokes, not funny moment. So it's between six to eight working years is most common. And so I was like, wow, I, yeah, we're at seven years, so I'm bang in the middle, and I could get her to eight, so that's great. I'm like at the, the kind of higher end of what's normal average. And unfortunately, um, about two weeks after that, she started getting sick, and on May 22nd, she passed away of cancer, a very aggressive, severe cancer that um, we just couldn't save her from. And she literally wore her harness, uh, walking me into the vet the morning of the 22nd, and then obviously did not leave the vet. So. Um, she had gone in for an exploratory surgery and, and just didn't wake up. Um, so, that, I mean, that's a whole other story. But, so she, she never retired. So I don't actually have the personal experience of retiring a guide dog. But I have lots of friends who do. And, and it's sad to me that, you know, she wasn't in good condition to keep working. And I, I think that was what was so disappointing to me, is I had it in my mind that I'm going to retire her, or I'm gonna, they're going to tell me I need to. And it's time and then they didn't they didn't say that I had like quite a, a decent amount more time and then it was like ripped away like that so suddenly in a split second without warning at all and so that was what made that so difficult um, and then I went in August to get Gallup and I got him on August 8th which will be our one year this year August 8th um, and so that was kind of my experience so what's typical is, is between the six to eight years However, 
There are the more unusual cases where dogs work past eight years. I have somebody in my training class who worked his first guide dog for 10 years. Um, and his guide dog didn't retire until it was, sorry, my family dog is coming in. Hello, Rory. Hi, I'm recording. So. And he worked for 10 years, which is a really long time. That's crazy to me. So, you know, there are the more unusual cases, and you certainly do hear of situations like that. And then there are obviously um, other situations like early retirement. So a dog can retire at any time. You don't want to work a dog that doesn't want to work. And so there's two reasons for early retirement. One, the dog has decided it does not want to work anymore. Two, a health issue. So if Gypsy had obviously gotten cancer when she was only four years old and had only worked for a year and a half, I would have had to retire her then. Or hip dysplasia, um, cataracts. A lot of guide dogs actually go blind from cataracts, which I find incredibly ironic. But it is a common thing for labs, which is a very common breed to be used as guide dogs. So any health issue like that typically requires early retirement. And, and then of course, like I said, when the dog decides to stop working. So that kind of leads me to the point of the warning signs for my dog is ready for retirement, which the Mira Foundation gave me the kind of 101 on what to look for when I was considering it with Gypsy. So some of the common signs are um, not getting excited anymore when they see the harness. So every guide dog gets excited to see their harness, like they love to work. And when you pull that harness out and they're no longer jumping for joy, wagging their tail, running right into it, you know, it's, it, he's not, he or she's not quite excited anymore for this. If they um, will like, they like to leave the house when they're on their leash, but they don't want to leave the house when they're on their harness, is another sign. If they will leave the front door, but then sit down, if they will walk out of the house and then turn back to the front door. Um, if they start walking down the street but then turn around. They're just kind of things like that, all kind of in the similar family, just literally showing you like, I don't want to do this anymore. Sitting down, walking really slowly, a lot slower than their typical pace was. So, you know, all of those are, are warning signs that your dog doesn't want to work anymore and that can happen at any age. I mean, Ultimately, like I said, you don't want to work a dog that doesn't want to work for you. You want your dog to love it. We're not here for animal cruelty. That's not what it's about. Our dogs love to work. And if they stop loving it, then we're going to stop working them. I mean, I know somebody who had to retire their dog at four years old from, from not wanting to work anymore. And, and that's the same kind of warning signs to look for as they age as well. So you hope that it, they get a longer working life and that they choose to retire later in life, and some don't even ever choose to retire. Some are forced to retire based on the fact that they are slowing down a bit, um, and the owner needs a fast-paced dog, or, you know, the dog can't keep up with the owner's lifestyle. That's definitely a reason to retire as well. And it's kind of, in my mind, a little bit more sad when the dog hasn't chosen to retire, because the dogs, like I said, do love to work, and I know retirement would have been so hard on Gypsy because she loved that harness so much and it would have killed her to not get to come out with me. And so now I kind of want to talk about life after retirement. Again, it really depends. Everybody's a little bit different. Some schools' rules are a little bit different, but this is how it works in most situations and um, in my situation with the Mira Foundation, who I will link down below, by the way. They're an amazing charity. Uh, you should check their site out. They have so many cute dogs on there. Basically, what typically happens is you wean the dog out. So it's not like one day you were working full time and the next day I never take you out again. You kind of start slowing their work schedule. So you leave them home one day of the week. You leave them home every other day. You bring them out for half days. It's kind of that kind of schedule. You just wean the dog off of working. And it's for yourself as well, of course. It's, it's hard for you to go cold turkey and it's hard for the dog as well. So that's how you wean them off work. And then once they're done work, there's a couple options. Some dogs go back to the guide dog school. Uh, some dogs go back to their original puppy trainers. So for the first year of their life, those people who volunteered to teach the dogs puppy commands and socialize them, it'll go back to that family. A lot of them will get adopted out. Uh, a lot of guide dog handlers will choose to give the dog to a good family friend or a good family member. Our plan for Gypsy was that she would become a family pet at my parents' house. I, I lived on my own at the time. 
so she would become a family pet to my parents and I would be able to obviously see her and visit her every time I went home and she would get to see me still and it really depends everybody's different what they want some people don't want to have to see their dog again for some people that's too hard and for other people it's too hard to think about not seeing their dog again so for me I would have never been able to give her up to the school or um, rehome her to you know somebody I wasn't gonna get to see very much for me it was really important that she stay within the family and my parents couldn't give her up either until obviously she was you know I guess ripped from us and forced to be to move on so I feel like that's kind of the gist of retirement there is like the early retirements due to sickness or to the dog choosing to stop work there is the mid-range, the common six to eight years of work life, and then there is the ones that just keep going, the owners keep working them, the dogs want to keep working, and the owner is okay with adjusting their lifestyle to suit their dog. So yeah, that's, that's really it for me personally. I want my dog to have the restful years after work, so I find with a lot of the experiences I've heard from people who have worked with their dogs for 10 or 11 years, the dog dies a week after finishing work and that's just something I personally wouldn't want for my guide dogs. Obviously it's different with Gypsy who, who died due to an illness we didn't know she had until the day she died uh, and never retired but I would want my dog if I was going to retire my dog my dog was ready and I was ready and we needed to do it I would want my dog to have you know a good at least a year to just be a dog not that they're not getting to be a dog when they're working because they get plenty of time off. I mean, Gallop's laying on the floor chewing on his ball right now. His little rubber Kong ball. So, like, they definitely get to be a dog during their working years, but it's not the same as, like, the full-time retirement lifestyle of, like, eating a bowl of ice cream and wearing a Hawaiian shirt. I mean, that's how I always picture Gypsy, just, like, living it up with her little sunglasses on and, I don't know, just kind of like the doggy retirement lifestyle. And, yeah, so I guess that's really all I wanted to cover. Um, for those of you who had always wondered, and please, please, like I said, give me any more dog-related requests. I will link Gypsy's tribute video down below. You should check it out. She was so cute. Um, and, and that's it. So, thank you guys for watching. I love you guys, and have a great day. Bye.